they're going to have to find additional revenue sources uh, or, or wherever that may be. They'll probably try to go out to you know, other countries to replace the U.S. and maybe China, Pakistan, or other regional countries to find um, some sources of financing. All right, there he was speaking on the Odd Lots podcast, hosted by our very own Tracy Alloway, who joins us now. And key takeaways from this conversation. Yeah, well, there is a lot to go through. Obviously, we spoke about Ahmadi's very dramatic escape from Kabul. He'd been upfront about that earlier, describing how he'd effectively been pushed onto a military transport plane wow. by his contacts in order to get out of the city. But he was describing what is a very dire economic situation now facing the Afghanis. So he's talking about the potential for capital controls. There are limits on dollar withdrawals from the banking system already, but he thinks those will have to be increased as the currency falls even further. And he was also talking about the wider challenges facing Afghanistan now. Take a listen. We had internally displaced people just because of the drought. Then we had the conflict and the fighting. And now add on top of it what, what, what potentially could be a, you know economic type of crisis. So it's a really challenging situation. We were trying to manage three shocks and now I think they're going to have to deal with a fourth, which is challenging. So four shocks facing an economy that is still very, very reliant on external funding, very, very dollarized, something like 70 percent, 65 percent of Afghanistan's deposits held in dollars. So clearly that funding is going to have to come from somewhere. No, that's it. So how are they going to do it? And the point is, and that you alluded to, is that's the informal economy, the black economy. Vastly bigger than the real economy here as well. This is the elephant in the room, really, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And one thing I learned uh, that I was surprised to hear from that interview is that opium receipts actually show up in Afghanistan's current account. So did you know? Um, but, but yes. not all of them, I'm sure. Not all of them. <laughs> but it does get to the, the big question, which is how is the Taliban actually going to fund its new government? Uh, the Taliban, perhaps unexpectedly, hasn't said very much on their macroeconomic policies. But we know, for instance, that they do get some opium-related revenue. We know that they've been raising what have been de facto taxes in the provinces, so charging people for mining rights, charging people uh, in order to go through the provinces, transportation taxes. And then the big question, of course, is whether or not they'll get some external support. So it's very unlikely the IMF is going to resume dollar shipments to Afghanistan, given that the Taliban remains on sanctions list. But there is the possibility of support from Pakistan, a sort of long-term player in that region and China as well. We know China has interests in Afghanistan's resources as well as the uh, actual geographical location as a transport network. Uh, Almani did say, I have to point out, that he thought China wouldn't step in to the extent that the U.S. and international partners had previously. It might be that China strikes specific resource deals, specific transport deals, but we're very unlikely to see them sending direct aid.